the reason for this teaching and this progress is very simple. We are opening the doors for this animal of the man in this jungle of the earth to learn the works and the ways of the universe. Knowledge seeker at the other end there, I think. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear pretty yes. Yes. Can. can you hear us? Okay. What is my name? Don't worry about him. He worked yeah. very late last okay. night. He got okay. too excited. Okay. He doesn't okay. even remember his name. Can I try Jorge? <coughs> so can you please? Just one second. Yeah. Morning, Mr. Cash. We, Good morning. We are just about five minutes behind. Just okay. give us five minutes and we'll be with you, okay? Thank you very much for letting us. Thank know. you very much. Just five minutes. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. I think uh, they've been running in the in the park or something. <laughs> yeah, well, they must have a bunch of stairs to go up or something there. Cash seemed out of breath, but. We did stressed. all of it. We ran across the park. We went up the stairs. You're right about everything. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we are out of breath is because you have a bunch of uh, Belgium officers chasing behind you. Maybe. No, no. That is for Tuesday. Okay. Let them have the rest. Let them. That's why you're doing the wrong direction. That's why you're practicing uh, now. I yeah. get it. Busy schedule. No, let me tell you what happened. Well, you don't usually start this, but last night uh, I let um, Armin, when he arrives, when he wakes up, as usually he's one hour behind, and uh, uh, what do you call it? Others, Marek and Marco and Jorge and Yvonne and I, in different lateness, we were in the lab. And I went for a rest and I came back and they were still there and they wanted to see, do they have to stay longer at 11 o'clock at night? I said, no, go home, we start tomorrow again. What happened is that we are testing the reactors for space lift. And what we have started is the first reactor from John failed through leakage. So, we need at least minimum of four reactors to achieve lift. The small reactor which uh, Armin and uh, Marek are working on, and they've done it uh, together. We put this reactor into vacuum, yes, last night. And we started the first phase of washing with uh, hydrogen. But uh, uh, instead of the washing, as we loaded, uh, I thought we'll carry on and see if it is, and then we can always empty it later on. Uh, and then we started the second reactor, which is the Iranian gravitational system. And uh, in this process, we add around about four centimeter gas at one bar uh, of a six millimeter tube, which is four meter diameter inside. We measured, everybody has the same standard, so when we load, all the seven tables carry the same measurement. And uh, then we release this four centimeter of gas into, I think it is five meter or six meter of tubing to expand it, that we take the pressure of it. Um, I have to say, all seven systems platform is exactly a replicate of each other. So if one of the knowledge seekers is not here, the others can carry on with the same work. So we don't make mistakes between each other's system, who's doing what. So then we open the chamber to the core, 
because it's got another valve at that point of the chain at the core, and we release the expanded gas into the chamber. Um, the position with Marak and uh, with the uh, almonds reactor, Marak is here, they'll explain because they, they went through the experience, even though it was the first time they were going through it, but even me, a seasoned, uh, what do you call it, a call lifter of these systems, it was still excitement to me to see such a plasma condition so early in the system, uh, even in testing. Um, the reactors Armin and uh, Malak are using is this is a brain child of mine, which I I literally managed to get the Iranians to build it for me when I was in Tehran, and it's a copy of the Earth. I explained yesterday how it is. It's a no control inside. It's the fields which they decide the fields and plasma condition in the inner core, which then that dictates the speed of the outside core. So it means any change in the speed of rotation of the total core, which is connected to the motor, is not dictated by any forces outside the internal magnetic field, plasmatic magnetic field of the loose core inside, which is literally hanging inside, is not connected to the outer core. It is built deliberately to be suspended, it's suspended inside. So the only thing which can affect is the speed of rotation or uh, its magnetic field, plasmatic magnetic field can affect the, the speed of the rotation of the other core, which is on the motor power, electric power, is through creation of plasmatic magnetic field. So. And Last is, night, is still uh, able to run a, a, a vacuum and gases into the inner core as well. Or yes, it it's totally independent. That's Everything it. is independent. But just no motor have, on it. Yes, all the chambers are individually vacuumed, and all the chambers are individually, what do you call it, controlled through the special way we set the pipe out. Right. We spent at least three, four hours with Marco and John and others. Um, three, four weeks ago, laying out the way we are going to set up the feeding channels. <coughs> so, uh, we sat, we, we discussed it, we put it together, we changed it, we put it back again, when we got the parts, we put it back together, and um, the combination we found on all the plates, on the panels, is, is a collective decision, and it seems to be the right one, and uh, we find it easy to work with, it's the logical way, and uh, I think I'll give it to Jorge till Armin arrives, because this was the Armin's baby, and um, he's not here to explain his emotions when he saw what happened with the reactor. Maybe, no, you have to go and call him to come. Yeah, so Jorge, as an observer of their system, maybe can explain to you what happened. Um, we need to um, start the live stream here. Would it be a good idea to do that now? We haven't started it yet. Okay, you better should have done. I talked for myself then all this time. Sorry, I think that's recorded uh, on the YouTube. <laughs> I thought you knew we, you wanted five minutes, so we waited there and then I didn't haven't started it yet. Yeah. So. Okay, start. Let, let me get yeah, them. Mr. Cash, I Sorry do have it that. recorded. So right. that will be uh, in the YouTube for sure. We always yeah, get it's recorded, recorded one yeah. way or another. Okay, no problem. So go on the live stream. Okay, yeah, let me get uh, the. I got Jorge started. He started walking out. It's the first time I see him walking out. So, uh, let him come and explain. I think, uh, uh, he's calling Armin, yeah. Or, uh, we can ask Ivan to explain to you, because he was there as well, and what we saw. Go ahead, tell me when you started the live stream. Okay, here we are, ready to begin, and this is uh, a special Knowledge Seekers workshop. Uh, we won't call it number eight, we'll call it the Special Knowledge Seekers Workshop. And we're not quite sure what we're in for tonight, but you can bet it will be something exciting for those who are interested in this kind of thing. 
It should be everybody on planet Earth when you think about it. And so we've got the um, uh, knowledge seekers from the Spaceship Institute, including Mr. Kesh and that. And let's uh, get over to them and see what's going on there. Okay, over to you. Uh, who would like to begin there? So, okay, it's me. Um, first of all, thank you very much for being available uh, today, which is a holiday. But um, in next few hours or so, you will understand the purpose of this uh, this talk. This talk is not so much about uh, the technology development, but we just explained something which happened last night since we talked yesterday um, in the workshop. We uh, It's been recorded on YouTube, but now explained for the people on the live stream. We have started the loading sequence of the reactors for the space technology. The core, uh, what we call core B, core A belongs to John. He's building it, his, um, his reactor core uh, showed some sign of failure after the first trials on um, Wednesday night, because his ceramic has cracks. Um, the gases seep through the crack, through this um, porous material of the ceramic. So, it is, reactor A is on, on a standby till John returns from Belgium. He says he's going to build a new one. Reactor B it belongs to and has been put together. I have to mention that all the reactors have been helped in one way or another by all of us. But the responsibility and the way it's been finally put together and initially put together lays with individuals. So, every, so certain people are responsible for certain works. Reactor B is the Iranian double core internally hanging um, central core, which is loose, is uh, suspended in the middle of the outer core with no motor connection except gas feed. Is controlled by Armin and uh, Marek, and we all poke in our nose in it to see what happens with it. Um, core number C belongs. It's the uh, uh, it's a Iranian original gravitational system, which um, as a team will try to. But I I stay in charge of it because I know it very well. Uh, no. Reactor C is the energy power supply system with three cores, I do apologize. This is the core built in Belgium, assembled in Italy <coughs> in different ways and repaired over six months. Uh, this is, hasn't come into operation yet. We're going to use it once we have the three base cores running, then that's the mother core which comes into operation. Reactor D is the Iranian gravitational system, half moon, two cores, three uh, storage capacity underneath for gases. This reactor has performed before. If you have seen pictures of like a 7 kilogram down to 6 kilogram, or you've seen the 9 kilogram to 8 and something kilogram about 3, 4, 5 years ago, this, this, these scale measurements are with this reactor when it was operated in Belgium. Uh, we have a reactor which is uh, Marco, he's still in the process of uh, Putting it together, it should be ready hopefully today. We have a reactor which uh, belongs to Iwan. Uh, it's been tested, it's vacuum tight, but we somehow we can't get the engine running. Something happens in the eddy current within the within the system or the winding. And the last one belongs to Jorge and Yoko, Yukako. And that is, should be ready hopefully today. So today, by the end of the day, we should have about six reactors running. The order we started was, we, uh, John's system is out of way, so uh, first reactor operational is Mark, Mark and um, uh, Armand's. We loaded the system with gases for the first time yesterday in the evening and uh, Immediately, within minutes or within an hour or so, we start seeing reaction of the plasma, and we'll, then we loaded up the, the D unit, which is the Iranian gravitational system, two running simultaneously. 
we saw certain results because they were on the floor. We saw certain effects that we made a decision to move all the reactors onto the star formation panel, which means we are ready to take off if it happens. I, uh, uh, as we go further, we explain it further. Armin is not here to explain what was happening. Uh, I think we give it to Ivan or Jorge to explain because they were around the table when um, reactor B came into operation and reached the plasma condition in a very, very beautiful way. I'll give the call to uh, to Jorge. Hello, good morning to all. What I'm good going morning. to tell that we have the first flight condition, but there was no reactor. It was Armin who was flying. <laughs> I need to pick in the air because it w uh, he was so happy that uh, <laughs> he need uh, to stay in the ground. What I observed of the reactor was uh, a little bit increase of the weight during two hours, maybe um, how much are, do you remember exactly? 80 grams or something like this and uh, we can observe some vibration in yeah okay uh, the weight uh, is not of the reactor that we are running it's in the middle because they are all connected to a plate so it's not so easy to measure uh, each one uh, how it's affecting to all now because it's, uh, they are not working together but uh, it's only the first sight we have about uh, the symptoms and we also uh, see like uh, changing in the speed of rotation uh, randomly we can say uh, i don't know how to explain it now but uh, suddenly uh, the speed are increasing or decreasing that's uh, with so and we can have the opportunity to stay in dark conditions it was amazing that the the lights on the top of the lab were uh, sparkling. Uh, the plasma inside is reacting to the working to, of the reactors, so we can see uh, strange things like uh, the condition when the ghost appears. <laughs> and uh, we have also interference with uh, the radio receiver. Um, it goes down maybe for uh, 20, 30 minutes and it changed, it changed the frequency. So we hear another uh, radio station different, it may be in other language like Arab or something, <laughs> we don't know. Eh? So at the end, uh, we can hear again. So we are, uh, still in progress to understand what is happening for me. Uh, it's not easy from this point to understand because uh, we only see uh, movements and uh, from this point trying to understand. Armin is here. In five minutes it's in the table. So So that's why I saw yesterday. So I, do, I do have a question, Jorge. I do have a question, Jorge, yeah. about that. Sorry. Um, the speed of rotation difference, was that on the inner free core or the outer core? Of, of the, the outer active? core. We only see the outer core. We can measure uh, only the outer core with a laser. So I don't think this uh, was very accurate measure because uh, it makes something strange, but uh, 
you can see the the difference. Visually, you can uh, observe that uh, the speed is changing uh, quickly. So it's uh, like slowing and suddenly accelerating. That's why I can tell. And was it a smooth acceleration or a hard acceleration? Sorry, I don't know. It's a smooth acceleration. Smooth, okay, yeah. It's not constant, the speed. It's between 250 and uh, between 250 and 420, maybe. Yeah, and the current is constant at 1.6 and 3 volts is the uh, yeah, the the current is uh, always keep constant, so uh, we don't use the the current to produce more speed. Uh, we are uh, testing in the same condition all the time, and the volts is slightly changing, only maybe zero zero point zero two or something like this. So uh, was it dragging the motor along when it tried to speed up? Sorry, uh, Marco is going to speak. Okay, uh, maybe um, when we started uh, um, this reactor, we set up voltage, uh, and it was uh, it was we were observing certain current, and after that, uh, current went down. A little bit, and it was stabilized. And uh, then, uh, then uh, speed of rotations go up, and uh, current, st current and voltage stay stable. And it was then several times changing, go down and up, and uh, without any changing of, of uh, power supply like voltage or, or current. And uh, we also we have opportunity to observe uh, magnetic fields. Uh, we have detector which uh, which is uh, which uh, which uh, measures magnetic fields in all three directions, uh, x, y, z, and we can observe also uh, changes in uh, in uh, strength of uh, magnetic fields in each of directions. And it's very interesting how this uh, um, strength magnetic fields is changing uh, because we have only two operating reactors on there is 120 degrees between them and uh, we can observe that uh, it's some kind of suction of magnetic fields from the part that uh, these operating reactors uh, are positioned in, and uh, it's a very, very nice feeling uh, that uh, something is, yeah, uh, that something is happening without changing uh, parameters of the motor, without changing of the voltage and current. And uh, so plasma takes on its own its it, it, its position on itself, and uh, uh, it's um, well. It, sorry, it, the, uh, the it dictates way that the, I can the see it, sorry. I was just going to say, if you're if you're measuring a quote unquote suction of the magnetic field. Um, a magnetic field would be inside of a motor. So the only way it can speed up without dragging is to decrease the magnetic field inside that motor. Am I correct in that? Uh, actually, plasmatic fields are interacting. And... 
when we were feeding hydrogen in, uh, we we put in, in uh, by stages. Let's say first we put uh, two uh, two measures. Then then we increase uh, for I don't know exactly maybe seven eight more times uh, eight measures of hydrogen and every time when we put more hydrogen in we observe dropping of the of the current uh, voltage voltage stayed the same on the on the on the meter on the on the motor and uh, but uh, speed speed of rotation didn't change so plasma takes on its own it's uh, it's it's a plasmatic fields interaction uh, there is no no change in the in the motor field so there is there is interaction of, of fields of plasmatic fields with uh, i don't know how to say with motor fields but yeah actually motor doesn't change um so also jorge said that uh, we observed okay. um, we observed how radio uh, we we lost the the radio station we just get noise and then uh, suddenly uh, we got another radio station in arabic language and uh, it was very interesting uh, observation also when we put uh, Ivan uh, reactor into the into the into the operation table. Uh, no, uh, uh, <laughs> into the into into the plate. But when we removed when we removed the Ivan uh, reactor, even though it was not working rea reactor, when we removed, suddenly uh, condition changed. Actually, it was only vacuum inside the reactor. It's nano coated reactor, but uh, when we just move it, uh, the condition changed, the radio frequency changed, the uh, speed changed, and yeah, it's just changing condition. No? Okay, maybe also Armin can uh, can tell something. Uh, now he's here, on the, so I'll pass the microphone to Armin. We'll make sure he gets his coffee first. I have it. I have it. I can't without it. Hello. Good morning, Armin. Hi, Armin. No, I brought it from home. Yeah. yeah. Morning. How are you guys? Hello. Hi, Armin. Hello. Yeah. Good yeah. to hear from you. Still alive. Still alive. Oh, Ludmil, come on. You should see yesterday what life is about. You remember, you know, Rick, uh, you know, a few... Uh, Rick, if you remember, you know, uh, first two uh, workshops, what we have with the guys, and we were arguing about how simple this technology will be. Yes. And, <laughs> and truly, it is what we said. You know, and it's and it's hydrogen. This is the start. And clearly we saw yesterday, you know, what interaction can do, magnetic and gravitational fields. You change a little parameter, it's totally changed. And you just need little amount of hydrogen to ch make that change. It's all magnetic or gravitational. We have to understand that without those fields, nothing will be exist. And if you know how to do the combination of, you know, uh, gases, you can you can do miracles, actually. <laughs> and it's and it's such an excitement day. Yesterday I couldn't sleep until I don't know four o'clock. I was pacing in the house, you know, up down, up down. <laughs> That's great, Arvin. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're going to show you a lot of videos. I, I I, took pictures, videos. Yesterday was like, wow day. You know, it's 17th of April. 
Yeah. And you don't know the date? <laughs> you lost your account. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, what I want to say, oh, this is a really great moment. What happened? Oh, I, I thought you already explained. Well, so. we explained from our point of view. Said your, What can I say? It's very simple, you know? If you look at it, you know, the combination, it's four reactors, one in the middle, three, uh, three on the side. Yeah, three on the side, actually. And you just, uh, it's different reactors, actually. One is uh, a free rotating core, uh, which me and Marek, you know, assembly it, and in the middle reactor, we already know it's been shown in a, uh, several times. Mr. Kisha showed it. It's a three core reactor, which is in the middle, and Iranian reactor, which is sitting on your right side, and one reactor that we are waiting, or it's going to be uh, <laughs> Ivan's, uh, or I don't know, Marco is keep assembling it. You know, keep, yeah, huh? okay. Yeah, he's doing a great job, actually, with his piano fingers. You know, uh, from this moment on, we're going to, I think, go live and every uh, test what we do, we you can see it. And uh, I don't know, you can say it's very simple for me. You know, what's going to happen? After this, you know, we will do more tests and show you guys. That's all. That's, <coughs> that's, uh, if you have any questions, I will answer it. That's really good news. I appreciate that, Armin. I think uh, people are going to really like to be able to watch on the... Uh, you're talking about on the uh, Spaceship Institute uh, live stream channel, I presume, uh, primarily. And... Uh, we'll also be probably doing some broadcasts on the live stream that we're currently also broadcasting on as well. So, um, but folks should know about the Spaceship Institute live stream. Maybe we can put the link in the um, in the live stream uh, channel for the Spaceship Institute live stream, so if people know where to go from that one. Even, even, even we sometimes, you know, it's Italy, you know, internet is uh, acting crazy in here. So even we don't have an internet, uh, we are taking videos and I can download it from my home and send it to you guys. So don't worry, the information will be shared in a minute. Yeah, we just, uh, you know, <laughs> actually our reactor, it's me and Mark, really yeah, strange. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt the magnetic field actually when I, well, me and Marco were standing near the, you know, and it's and it's really different feeling, and I don't know, I, I felt, and it's and it's a strange feeling for a moment, but it's, you know, it's beautiful. Yeah, a tickle factor. <laughs> it comes and tickles you, you know, and. Uh, our old tensions are so good yesterday, so everything worked. Now we make making a thing for Marco to finish up. I'm going. I'm pulling my hair. All you know, seeing this guy going around and keep putting that. You know, I said, "Come on, you know, finish up. Let's move." Anyway, you know, a little change, uh, and you have to just fit your core very you know, little amount of hydrogen. The outer core, we didn't fit anything, only inner core, because we are creating gravity, actually. So, pull. So, if the middle reactor is going to be operational, we will see the connection, all three, all four reactors with each other. Interaction. And Guys, it is, it is, I don't know, uh, I cannot hold my excitement. I wish all of you been here, you know, to see this. Any questions? Uh, 
Yeah, we have a question here. Uh, just a second, let me get the live stream up. We have a question here from uh, Ben, who's uh, attending at uh, at our location right now. Hi, uh, Armin. I have a question. Uh, yes. Are you uh, electrosensitive? Do cell phone signals and Wi-Fi signals and radio signals bother you? And being near power stations, does that give you bothering? A does that give you a slight headache? In the direction that you're, are you electrosensitive? Do you know what that means? <laughs> oh, I, I, I didn't get the you question. You said you spoke uh -huh. uh -huh. Affect me? No, I don't think so. I affect them. You <laughs> <laughs> got headache only from whiskey. <laughs> no, why? Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's a fun time. Oh. One minute, I will pass it to. Good morning, this is Ivan. Good morning. Hi, Ivan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Good morning. Well, my reactor yesterday, uh, the as we were testing it, for I got it finally, you know, completed, but then it was giving us a lot of headaches to reach um, air tightness or uh, vacuum tightness rather. And uh, so we had to apply uh, silicone all over it. And when finally it seems to be uh, ready, and we put it on the platform and we vacuumed it. Then we came to the conclusion that the motor was no longer running. And uh, this had happened to uh, Mr. Keshe's uh, uranium reactor as well. And he, so Mr. Keshe said this is normal, but it, uh, it turned out that uh, we could not get the motor uh, running uh, uh, later on also. So. I'll have to look at it today. I think that there's nothing wrong with the motor, but I fear that something somewhere is touching something. And so since the motor in, in is very uh, weak compared to the big disc inside, well, rather big disc that it has to activate. Um, if something is touching somewhere, obviously it's not running. Um, if that is, was is that the case, under was that just under a vacuum or was that just uh, under atmospheric as well it would not run yeah well in in the there are two reactors which have the the motor is in the vacuum as well this is the, the uranium reactor uh, mr Keshe's reactor and mine the motor is in the lower compartment right. Uh, right. sitting in the vacuum so if it's in a vacuum, often it'll uh, basically short out in the vacuum because uh, the spark can uh, easily arc and just cause a, uh, a discharge rather than causing the magnetic fields to work right for the motor. So that, yeah, that may be the... So what I'll do that's, now... Uh, is that's what we ran release. into. Sorry. Well. We ran into that as well with... Uh, trying to get our a little um, uh, plasma um, voltage supply that was inside the vacuum to work. It just stopped working at a certain vacuum condition and died essentially. And we couldn't figure that out for a while until we uh, found out that it was shorting internally because of the vacuum allows the spark to happen much easier and short itself out. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Kisha says that, and that's what, what we witnessed with his reactor, because his motor would also not run in the vacuum. But then, as soon as uh, this minimal amount of uh, hydrogen was added, it started to operate normally, but not so with mine. So, I think I'll have to take a look at it, you know, to completely re release the vacuum, uh, bring it back to atmospheric conditions, and see if the motor is still running. Still not running. Okay, well, I'll take. I'll have to look at it today. <laughs> uh, Guy just, um, excuse me. Guy just had an idea here that uh, may explain it. Maybe you can tell us whether it's true or not. You want to go ahead, there, Guy? I was just thinking about um, 
about brushes uh, could it could it be uh, like uh, the brushes inside the motor motor interfere somehow? maybe one motor has brushes and the other is a brushless they're both the same uh, okay. Ms. Keshe said the, says they're both the same. I think they are with brushes. Okay, I, I didn't you. open the motor, but uh, it's a straightforward DC motor. If you if you uh, uh, revert the the, the um, polarity, it it reverses its uh, action. I think it's a it's a normal DC motor with brushes. Right, usually if it has two leads to the motor, it would be uh, just a, a DC brushless, but if it's, or brushed, sorry, but if it's brushless, usually there's three leads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then it would need a capacitor. There are only two leads, there are only two leads. Right. Okay, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, so wish me good luck for today to, to get it back <laughs> into operation i'll uh i'll pass the microphone uh, to Maren. Today and i can mention two things here one of them is when you are under a vacuum there is no temperature dissipation so you can overheat pretty easy the motor that's one thing and going back in the years when we were uh, insulating transformers uh, just paint your reactor with latex that is going to insulate the air leaks okay okay spray it with latex spray it or just paint it at the time we were just dropping the transformers into a bucket of latex pull it in five yeah. ten minutes and everything is perfectly isolated so just yeah, an well, idea. Yeah, obviously that's uh, that's more or less what we have been doing it because when I we we applied the this uh, siliconized latex on the outside, yeah. So that's uh, but we did not we don't have a bucket of it, but uh, it's it the, the end result is nearly the same. <laughs> okay, bye. Hello, Marek. Hey, uh, they want, you they want me to explain more about Iranian reactor, uh, the one which is half sphere, and it has vacuum. Uh, and the vacuum is also motor running, so uh, it has also its own. Uh, water cooling system with water pump because it's it it's heating quite a lot so it needs the cooling so that's one remark and uh, yesterday i had workshop check workshop and uh, after some time uh, Jorge came and told me I should run to lab to see <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> I told people I have to I have to cut it. <laughs> I have to run. <laughs> they didn't understand. <laughs> okay, and I ran to the lab and I saw uh, saw the reactors already. Uh, operating, rotating, and uh, as they told you, there there were changes in in the in the spherical Iranian reactor, which uh, changed its rotation speed. I have measured it during some period <laughs> of time, and it was oscillating these rotations so it went up uh, changing uh, let's say from I don't know exactly now from head but uh, from three three hundred and eighty to four hundred and then it came back and then again up uh, 
this period was about one to two minutes. So it was os oscillating as I could see and measure. Yes, and we are also measuring, uh, as you have heard, magnetic field with Metrolab uh, weak field detector. And uh, we could see the changes of the magnetic field. It was not so big, these changes, but it also, uh, there was also some drop in the magnetic, uh, magnetic induction vector and also the change of this vector uh, direction. Actually, we have seen that this vector is oriented uh, out, out of the running reactors. So, like uh, something like magnetosphere is being created around these reactors. And as, as they have told you, we have seen other things happening with the radio and lights. So some interactions are already ongoing and we have to do more observations and continue, continue the loading. Did you have to shut them off or did they continue running after you guys were done? Uh, they are running still overnight. We haven't seen them to uh, today morning, but <laughs> okay. So somebody saw them. <laughs> so they were gre greeted. So I think they they feel very very well. <laughs> That's good. It's back to me again. Okay, let me explain something. Sometime it'll be embarrassment what happened last night. But uh, it's as we don't have a live, uh, what do you call it, view on the lab at the moment because of the technical problems. Um, if you were alive with us, uh, when uh, Yvonne left, we decided to, as they said, remove his uh, core from the table or from the plate. And when we brought it on the plate, we thought we'll see what's wrong with it because we are very desperate to bring the fourth reactor into operation. And uh, while we brought it on, then the whole lot went into the emergency room operation. It was fantastic. We had doctors pulling the system apart. We had surgeons cleaning up, nerve system to be connected. We had one holding the reactor like a baby and pampering it. But at the end, after about 20 minutes emergency, we managed to put the reactor back together and it's still alive. It was a it was a very nice uh, what do you call it a view from for somebody from outside. How about five people working and holding the reactor together and putting it together? This is a collective job. As uh, we we do not look at whose reactor it is. What we do as a team, we carry on with the same thing, and um, it is very strange how. Soon, it's not as strange because, as I said, now for the first time, people here have received the same feeling as I have. Uh, that within a matter of a uh, very short time, uh, you see your reactors reacting to the loading sequence. Um, the single reactor cores uh, usually don't react so easily, but because we are putting combination, we are creating a condition of forcing the reactors to interact. And we see when we do, how one condition affects the other one. So this is part of the process and this is part of what will be reporting, I presume on a, on a weekly basis or sometime on a daily basis. <coughs> so, uh, Marco is trying to show me something, he's received something from so somebody, a specialist, let him explain to you because to him is important. Can you explain? 
actually, uh, I've got an email uh, uh, where uh, is one of the knowledge seeker from my country uh, sent me electronic um, pictures of uh, nanomaterial uh, which were made with uh, electron microscope and uh, well we can observe uh, I don't know uh, I don't know if I can post it well we can observe the the structure of nanomaterial. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not used to. Uh, I first this first first time that I'm uh, looking to to the picture of uh, from the electron microscope. Hundred nanometer. Diameter. Yeah, maybe Marek can explain a little okay. bit more. Uh, there, there are spaces. There's material and spaces and. Uh, uh, what material? Which material is this? Uh, nano, nano coated. Does it have a pattern? It is uh, the gap is about hundred nanometers. Um, it's it's like a coral reef, as they said it. Yeah. It's like um, ice or what do you call it? Like snowflakes, but closed snowflakes with a lot of cavities. Um, no orientation. There is certain type of orientation. Um, they 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 orientate in each layer in the same direction, as far as I can see. Near enough layers all end up in the same direction at a gap. And uh, <clears throat> it's um, it's a very it's a very strange structure. It's possible to have like a screen share so we can see. Um, Marco has to post it on. His well, uh, we actually we've got this uh, this email uh, recently, right now. So we have to to look at this uh, these pictures more carefully. Maybe let's let's continue with with yeah, workshop no, and. No, we'll post this later. Yes. On. Yes. Uh, <coughs> I think something which is coming up in a very strong way. Close your website, please. Close your close your program, your email. Um, what is merging now is that scientists around the world or enthusiasts around the world are collectively working towards one target. Uh, we see everybody is using their own speciality to explain part of the technology, and the technology is. Uh, I have received a short memo note uh, late last night and um, indication from the note again the way it has been done shows exactly what we were expecting. <clears throat> the material is a CO2 GANS state but it shows itself as they say. Um, we will release more data as we receive it. Um, we know that there are different uh, scientists around the world who are putting the whole thing together in their own way and the institute will stay in support and uh, we'll see what we can do. As I keep on saying, no knowledge has ever been shared so fast, so immediate within a matter of hours from the lab into the world population. And we know uh, that, that uh, the whole following goes in different ways. People are participating as they they think or they want to know. Um, the reason I asked for this meeting today, today is a special day in the Christianity, in the world of Christianity, and it's a significant day. And I chose this day a long time ago, and things came to be together for this today. Uh, the reason for the presentation of today or discussion of today has nothing to do with the with the work of the foundation. It has to do with the way I have presented the technology over the past 40 years or 30 years, and the reason is being presented this way. <clears throat> we explained this a long time ago in different ways through peace treaty, through peace conferences, through uh, peace world message through the messengers of God as a scientist. 
we explained this a few lectures ago about the Messiah and the rest. So, today is the day to put a lot of things in order, why and how and where we are and why the Foundation is this situation. Because <clears throat> there is a very high chances of me not being here very soon. We see it and our security people are informing us closer and closer. So, I would like to put a lot of things in order before anything happens and the way the structure has come. The, <clears throat> the whole process with me, as a lot of you know, started in early 70s and early 60s. And I knew my position from childhood, what I have to do, and it was very clear to me what, the, what, what has been as part of my life. Uh, I was born in an environment that the radiation to be part of my life, and it's still part of my life as of today, from, from the day I was born, through my father. Secondly, through being, becoming a nuclear engineer, I knew why I came nuclear engineer, I knew what the destiny was to do. In pursuing the target of the purpose for, for why you are born, I knew I had to have a say in what is happening and understand it, not as an engineer, but as a man, and the life path pulled me in that direction to teach me about the humanity. I was born to learn about the man and the man failures and the man reasons for so much mayhem. But at the same time, on the other hand, it's easy to talk, but you have to be part of the whole system to understand where the failures are, that you can do something with it. With the passage of some 30, 40 years, I learned about the weaknesses of the man. I learned about how man has been abused, and how these abuses can be stopped, and how people have you abused each other through the process of wealth, through the process of uh, need, through process of disguise, and through every other channels. We have seen deception as the leaders of the world, we have seen deceptions in the, in the cloth and the rope of the religion, We've seen every aspect, from the man on the street, how he has got into the habit of cheating, lying, stealing, and at the same time, kidding. And always went back on the process that the whole thing has to come to a position of understanding how people can have everything, that there is no need. And <clears throat> there has been a passage in this process. I see and I can understand every reason why I had to go through this process. I have ate with the kings, I have ate with the presidents, I've sat with the poorest man who had nothing to eat on the floor in, in different parts of the world. I have traveled more than 60-65 nations and I've dealt with over 120 nations on this planet during my working life. I've come to understand one thing, all men live through greed, and all men live through one thing which they don't know, and is part of the structure of their DNA and their RNA, to kill, to destroy, to achieve, to have. It does not matter what we do. A king kills a child for, it, uh, for his own sexual behavior. A priest abuses a child through the name of God in the church. The same goes with every other religion. It's not in one religion or the other. It's the same, it doesn't matter what nation or nationality these leaders are. We've seen them, they shout, they kill, and they howl when they're at the position of the seat of the power, and then they hide in a hole, rat holes, to hide, to save their own meager lives. And we've seen them in the past few years in different parts of the world. But at the end, it comes to one thing. Why do we need to kill to possess? And why do we need to destroy to have? A lot of people didn't understand why we set up the World Peace Treaty, and then why we set up the process of teaching so rapidly the way I have done. A lot of you, we know hundreds of thousands of people 
in their heart and in their paper in their house, downloaded the World Peace Treaty and they signed to it. And they're trying to live with it or they forgot what they signed in. I kept the technology very close for the time when it's ready. And as you know, we gave the technology freely to the governments. The scientific organizations around the world understood what this change is, but the governments blocked the process because of their power and what it could have brought as a because of the birthplace. I'm going to ask Marek to download a piece of paper which I've given it to him. It's been sent to me by NASA. Can you upload that, please? If you read, this paper is signed by the uh, Propulsion Systems Brand Chief, is Mr. Catherine Henkel. It's 27th of September 2012. And I read to you one paragraph, you can read the rest of it. These are the scientists in NASA who studied everything we do and they understand where we are, how far correct we are, but the government needs to keep us silent. When you say we are not evaluated, this is from George C. Marshall Space Flight Center, September 27, 2012. Paragraph, you read it yourself. We would be honored to have you come and present your propulsion theories and bring the demonstration units to show us your technology in operation in a series of meetings between the 7th of October and 11th of October. We extend this invitation to you to come as our special invited guest. So, you understand, people at the highest level have understood what we do in the scientific world. But, Unfortunately, the world leaders, because of their political strength, are silencing the Science Cash Foundation, because scientists at NASA level are honored to have the technology to be working and how we are working, and there is a need for collaboration and not separation. One of the reasons which I pushed ahead with the teaching and the knowledge seekers in the past few months, and now we achieved it with having the knowledge seekers here. It was my embarrassment and shame, and in so many ways, unbelief in what one of our supporters in United States delivered to the White House as a peace message and a peace treaty world message. What put me to shame, it was my own, what you call, misguided thoughts that world leaders understand what this is about. What I received in response, in a private letter from the White House, put me to one thought. Your Excellency President Obama, I respect your letter of 24th of July. I sent you the peace message. You sent me a letter, nothing but about killing and wars and what you have to do to kill and to protect your nation through wars and armies. I would like, if you can release that letter from President Obama. It reads, it's addressed to me, I don't have actually cash, it's on the White House private letter, not the head of letter, with no references. Which means this is private between the President, but this is shame for me in reading it. It says at the top, Dear Mehran, and it's signed by Barack Obama. The people who received this letter on my behalf in the United States, they wanted me to react immediately, because this was not the purpose of the World Peace Treaty to justify killing and support of nations. We looked for justifying how we can change armies of countries into the armies of peace and support. This letter explains to me sacrifices of man for nothing. 
why why a leader of the most the strongest nation in the world has to justify killing and to support national security. What has puzzled me is U.S. alone in past 10, 15 years has spent over 1.2 nearly two trillion dollars in Iraq and Afghanistan and still to follow in what? In supporting mainly armies and manufacturing tools of killing, in creating employment and wealth for who? If the American government would have given something to my calculation, nine million dollars to each citizen in America, this would have created more wealth and job in that nation. Then all the killings which is done and still carrying on under different names and borders. My message to world leaders is very simple. And my message to the soldiers who carry arms to keep it very simple. The bullets you carry have all the ingredients for you and your family to live a very rich, healthy life. The powder inside is the fuel for your currents, for your food. And the cover of a bullet, open it up and use it for its nanotechnology and nanomaterial to feed your family. We have seen enough war. We have seen enough killing. And we have seen enough aggression. I've been to Africa, I've run business in Africa, where a glass of water, clean water, costs a lot of money. But, European nations throw millions of tons of food into ocean and keep prices. This has to come to an end, and with the technology we delivered, we have brought it to an end. This is the reason why a nation like Belgium issues warrants for my arrest and warrants for me and my wife to appear on the Congru court allegations and declarations for fraud and for practicing medicine. First of all, we don't practice medicine. Can you post the post to put sport warrants with the Belgium government, please? Both of them, yes. So, why? How can I be doing these things when I gave my whole knowledge freely to the human race? People pay for development, and the Cash Foundation is the only organization in the world who has, as part of his research and development, refunds anybody who enters his research and they are not happy with. There is no organization in the world which refunds its own volunteers, if which they sign into and they pay for, back to them. Up to today, we have refunded anybody who's asked for a refund according to the what they wanted, except four cases due to the support of the foundation website. We had to delay or keep supports for any further which we have spent hundreds of thousands of euros in the past 12 months to stop the attacks by the Belgium government through IMAC, through Chinese servers. We can prove the whole package. So, they attack us to bring us down, we protect ourselves, and then they say, why you cannot pay? Because it costs hundreds of thousands to do. And then, the process is very simple. We will not attend the police interview in Belgium on the 22nd. And we ask for protection for me and my family, not only from the Italian government, but through the United Nations. This will stand, we have launched it, and we stay put in our place. We do not escape, we do not hide, we do not run. From today, the gates of the Cash Foundation is open to anybody who likes to come and stay with us, to make sure 
the crook and pedophiles and thieves of leaders of this world cannot stay and do what they've done up to now. They have put men against men to kill each other for them to benefit for a few hours and days they are alive on this planet. We heard in the news that His Eminence, the Pope, has said he's ready to meet aliens. Your Eminence, the system for you to meet the aliens is getting developed less than 400 kilometers, 500 kilometers from your residence in Italy. Come and have a look. We invite you to our center. The same goes for the world leaders. We invite you to come and see the change people will bring, not us. Covering themselves on the name of the fraud or practicing, we do not practice health, we practice environmental development. I create a copy of the planet Earth. If planet Earth gives you vitamins and minerals, and Earth is criminal, so am I. This is what you did not understand about the health systems we make. The health system we make is not medical, but is a copy of the geological structure of the Earth, the way they have explained to you even in this workshop today. A small amount of gases which is not even visible can make changes in the structure, the way, for example, you go to the fountains in different parts of the world and you drink the water to change the site or to change cancer. Now that we told you the essence of living, this is how these systems are made. The patterns are out, anybody can do. In fact, <clears throat> what has puzzled me is that the world leaders, as you know, like President Obama through their ambassadors, Brazilian government, uh, the governments in East Asia, all have asked and they send delegations to us to collect the key or for us to deliver to their embassies. So. How come the knowledge which is given as a free and is getting studied and worked by different nations now has become a criminal offense in Belgium? This is a this is deliberate act to silence a scientist. But I have a message for all of you. Be it your eminence, the Pope, be it the his eminence, Ayatollah Khamenei of Iran. Can you scan and post this on the site, please? You will read three pages. I do not read it for you. But in these three pages, even they have a wrong English spelling might be because it makes you happy to find a fault. This is the language of the Creator. The reason we are here today. The reason why the Keshe Foundation and the name of the Keshe technology has been put on the map. Very simple. I am ashamed of my own creation. If you understand what that means. As a created, as a human being, I had to live amongst you, in your body. To be ashamed of my own creation. I had to live your lives to know how greedy you are, how thieves you are, and how you kill so easily. And this has to stop from today. I have put it in writing. The ones who want to call it, they call it. The ones who are the world leaders, read it. This will stay with this pain will delay, and in time will be understood. The way I have shown you how to you make food out of fresh air, I have shown and I explained to the 
nuclear scientists in past two weeks how gold was easily made from in the environment of the earth. Life has no value but to serve. The Cash Foundation headquarters in Italy is open to public. You knock on the door in the Sassano, everybody knows more or less where Cash Foundation is, they know who we are. Lake Lagarda, Locality San Lorenzo. This is home of knowledge and faith, but peaceful faith. You can walk in, see everything, bring your system and ask and teach us and we teach you. There is no limit into what we teach. Mark Hall goes to the people and the crooks who sit in the seat of government. I had to eat with you in different nations to understand how you defraud your people. I had to pray in your houses of worships in different nations to understand how you are structured and abuse the name of God to benefit a few. Now, it's in my writing. Can you post that paper, please? It's posted. This is my, my wish and my way of doing things. And I'm not ashamed or afraid of any people, any world leader or any religious leader who tries to attack me. I have created you, and at my wish, I can end your life. You wished, and for years you asked for Messiah. Here I am, standing in front of you. I'm ashamed of my own creation, the human race. And I've said that for years to my family and my wife. But I had to experience how you created things from nothing, claim to possess everything. The purpose of today was very simple. You wanted to see Messiah and you prayed for it for thousands of years to change not only your beliefs but take you to heaven. We have offered you the whole lot. And the panel of knowledge seekers on this table who are here today were chosen to be here for their deeds and their acts and the deed and acts of their forefathers. My call goes to Vatican, to His Eminence the Pope. Meet us, we discuss everything in detail and if I'm wrong, I'm prepared to stand for my deeds. But, the cleaning has to come from the house. Put olive branches in the place of the swords of the guards of the Swiss Guard and the armies which you carry. And do the same with the followers of Christ around the world, today and this week and next week and then on, that the arms has to be replaced with roses and with olive branches and the metals of the guns and the nuclear weapons has to be changed for producing homes, food, the way we have shown, and shelter for the people who don't have. The same my call goes to His Eminence Ayatollah Khamenei. 
as the Islamic religious reader, you have had the foresight to be correct and bring this knowledge through your protection to its flourishing. And a lot of people ask me why I keep on talking about three exiles. I've been imprisoned, I've been exiled, I've been threatened to be killed for my knowledge and nothing else. In my business world, when I used to be a millionaire, every door was open to me and the best hotels. Since I opened my hand and what I am, and most of the secret services knew of this declaration of today for a long time, and that's why they set up to avoid today's uh, discussion and this uh, disclosure. They did not expect it to be disclosed today, but today is important day in the world calendar with the death of Christ. And we chose the day as the creators, as the Son has to be linked to the Father. I have no problem with putting everything with you. You are Christians, you are the Pope, you are Muslims, you follow Christ, uh, different sects of Shia or Sunni. You don't need to change your faith. You don't need to change the way you believe. The only thing you have to change is the way you think about killing, wars, and you are now feeding it through these stupid games to the children of the future. The child from age of two or three knows nothing but killing and running and shooting. So you are ingraining this behavior in the future of this race, and this has to stop. Something you did not realize, I told you yesterday that today we will disclose something, and you heard it and you didn't understand it. They told you we can interfere with the radio frequencies. Same time, we can interfere with any games which is made, which is called aggression and wars in it. At same time, the same way as with the American plane was captured through the same technology which you seen today, as they explained to you, they could see the light flashing on the roof, on the ceiling of the lab, which is about four meters, five meters away from the reactor. We can interfere with any weapon technology across the world. But this will not be, because if we force you, then you fight to get it. We invite you to dispose of it yourself. I say it again, I was involved in the peace talks and the whole work of the Northern Ireland Peace Treaty. As I said, the IRA and the Sinn Féin and the rest knew exactly our operation, how peaceful it was and how correct it was. The British government knew how I was personally involved. And I thank them for giving me this opportunity to learn how peace can be done in a very easy way. We asked and we initiated the Iranian peace talk in different ways and we see the fruit of it today. Wars are no reason and there is no ground for it. Within weeks, people are seeing what we are doing, all the major military stations and the whatever you want to call it battleships, latest uh, aircraft carriers, the top airplanes, fighters, will not be able to move, because now people have seen it, they have learned it, and they are copying it. They will force you if you do not follow the procedure. You claim that the revolution, in the, what you call spring uprising, was done by the people to change the leaders of the Arab countries, now the scientists in the West will do the same with the Western leaders who do not follow the procedure of peace. The knowledge is in their hand. They are making the nanomaterials in thousands and hundreds of thousands in different countries, 
Chinese are teaching my books as part of the university text. We have spoken with their scientists, they are teaching, people are reading. The Arabs have translated it and using it in different way to protect Syria, the way it's been announced. They have called me as they receive the technology as a Tesla of physics, which has no relevance. And in different parts of the world, people are testing it. So, the knowledge is in the hand of man. And from now on, the way we have shown the first reactor, just the first smallest reactor operation yesterday, which was explained by the knowledge seekers, has shown the power of this technology. A very few micron grams of gas can penetrate tens of meters. We run, I run a test on one of the reactors just to see the Iranian reactor being in operation yesterday. I know its influence. And then the fact of it is still there, but I cannot explain it to my knowledge seekers. In the afternoon, I asked them to walk with me in the garden, and they could see the influence of the fields without them knowing, on the, what you call chemtrails, the way it was opened up. It never opens up that way, without the effect of magnetic field. So, my message is very simple. Read what we have posted today, and ask today to send it to as many people as you can. Because, the message is very clear. For centuries and thousands of years, in different names and religions, you wanted to have everything to find peace, to find prosperity, to find the, the day when everybody has everything. In one lab, come in and we show you. Energy, food, material, motion, and anything else you want to produce to live a comfortable life. There is no need for wars. The reason for this teaching and this progress is very simple. We are opening the doors for this animal of the man in this jungle of the earth to learn the works and the ways of the universe. And as you understand fully, his Eminence, the Pope, does not go out and say he's ready to meet aliens, because we are not aliens, we are amongst you, and you know this is the time of reunion. The most powerful religious man on earth does not make such a comment few days before we show the reactors. They are fully aware of what we are doing, and understand through their advisors the potential of what is to happen. Let me explain to you one thing very clearly. His Eminence the Pope, within minutes after his inauguration, was handed over the peace treaty as a package. We have strong followers at the highest levels, and they were on the floor of the declaration. And it was handed over to Vatican directly. As advisors to the Vatican, they had the right to do so. So, it's not that they don't know, as much as His Eminence, the Pope, His Eminence, Ayatollah Khamenei of Iran, His Excellency President Obama, the Chinese leader and the Russian leaders know about the technology, at the same time they never thought it would come to affect them this way. Now we are here, ask people to change the course of the humanity, and opening of the doors into space, not for man. Read the last paragraphs of the paper we released today. Man is just maturing enough to be able to see beyond the wall, tall enough to be able to just have a glimpse. But to be able to jump over the wall, you have all to give hand, the way we do here in the Institute. We work as one team, we don't ask the time and the place. So, I hope I made this message very clear. And please, 
if you believe in what the foundation does and you do, post this across the universe, across this world, because people are waiting for something which they've been barred and blocked to see and to understand. You see the letter from the scientists at the highest space institute, is an honor to them to have a scientist like me, and to their world, the leaders of their nation, my travel had to be blocked. Now there is no block. Now we invite the scientists from Russia, who have the same value for our findings here. This week we had the nuclear scientists at the highest level of the Italian government in our foundation, and they understood the potential of what is to be delivered. The Iranian scientists the same, and did the others. So, our knowledge is open and free for every man on this planet, because I cannot steal what is mine, and I cannot take away from what I've created. And I cannot be different from one child to another. The child of Adam went the wrong way. We open the ways to correct it, and now is the time to join in. Thank you very much. We close this disclosure, and I thank you, Rick, for allowing it to happen and moderating it. And I thank all the Cash Foundation supporters around the world, if they understood what this means. Uh, Come to Italy. From today or tomorrow, our doors are open. We have a beautiful big gate and a big heart and a big place to accommodate all of you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Cash, that was a very uh, strong, Thank you. strong uh, statement there in the last bits. Please send these messages and these documents across the world on every channel you know. Because if we do not do it, it will never be done the way we planned it to be done. It is very hard, but this is the way to be done. We've done this before in a couple of other places, and we always have seen the results. It's the way to be desired to bring peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. And goodbye Thank, to Thank you, Mr. Kesh. Thank, Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thanks. Goodbye. Thanks. That uh, appears to be the end of today's special the Knowledge Seekers Workshop. Um, what can I say? That's it for now. Thanks for everybody. Please get this message out to anybody that you can and share the documents as much as you can. Thank they you. are already on the Facebook, my, my Facebook page. Yes, and they're posted in the uh, live stream chat as well on the uh, uh, Cash Workshop um, channel. Yeah, this this message will be spread in uh, China also. Okay, thanks to everybody. We're going to end the uh, live stream. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.